Welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I teach, my hair is flopping all over the place, you'll find out why. And I teach, oh man, um, I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. And today I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders. Um, so everyone is welcome to learn with us, adults, kids, doesn't matter what you look like either. You can be a mess like I am today, and you can learn with us. So, I hope you are ready to get started. You're probably wondering why I'm in a robe, why my hair looks so messy. I'll try and redo it there for you a little bit. It's falling out from me shaking my head around so much. But we are having a poetry PJ pajama party this week. Woo! So, here I am in my jammies. This is um, my little jammy shirt. I got my robe on, my jammy scrunchie um, that I put my hair up in every night to keep the curls. Actually, I probably never wore my hair curled on TV, but I do sometimes. Um, so if you don't have your jammies on for our poetry party and you want to, go put them on really fast. And we are going to get started. So I hope that you are doing so well. Um, I'm doing really well. I am loving teaching poetry. It was something that I'm not totally comfortable with and I've been getting a little better at it. So it's fun to kind of do things that maybe um, are a little hard for me. So I hope you are ready to learn today. You're in the green zone, you're focused. I was a little bit in the blue zone. Um, when I were, woke up this morning, but I've kind of like worked myself out of it. I had a good day. I did some exercise. So now I'm feeling like I'm pretty much in the green zone. Um, I do feel a little like wiggly from sitting, but that's okay. So let's go ahead. Um, if you are in red, the red zone, um, go ahead and make sure that you get help from someone to help you get to green. If you're in yellow, Man, the hiccups, yellow or blue. Let's do some deep breaths because we need to get our brain and our body ready to learn. Remember, we pick a spot that is good for both our brain and body to learn. And deep breathing helps our brain and our body, actually. It's kind of amazing. Um, so it helps to calm your brain and clear your mind. Um, it helps to calm your body. So let's do some deep breaths. We'll let them out all the way in. Do it again. Yeah, deep breaths always help me. So, um, I hope you are excited to learn today. Our goals for today is I will be able to understand and identify the characteristics of poetry. I will be able to read and analyze poetry, and I will be able to write a poem. Um, so if you've been with us at all this week, we've been talking about poetry, and the best part is there aren't really any rules when it comes to poetry. That's why I'm in my jammies, because we don't have rules when it comes to poetry. <laughs> so you can have poems that are super long. You can have poems that are super short. You can have poems that have complete sentences. You can have poems that just have words and phrases. You can have poems that rhyme or don't. Um, you can pretty much do whatever you want with poetry. I was reading a poem the other day that taught me something, and then I was reading one that made me laugh, and then I was reading one that like, ooh, I felt like this person was feeling sad that wrote the poem. So poetry can really be anything that you want it to be, and that's why it's so awesome. So today we are going to start with reading a book, um, a poem, um, and then we are going to talk about how we can add details to our poems, and then we are going to write some poetry on our own, okay? All right, let's get started. So this is 
Spectacular Spots by Susan Stockdale, and this is being read with the permission of Peachtree Publishing. So, Spectacular Spots. Spectacular Spots. If you were with us yesterday, and if you weren't, that's okay. That is alliteration, right? The same beginning sound. Yep, so everybody say it. Spectacular Spots. Nice job. Here we go. Hmm, let's see. Ooh, this is pretty. Spots on creatures all around. I'll give you some time to look at these pictures. Way up high and on, <laughs> sorry, and on the ground. Spots on snakes and gliding snails. Swimming turtles, singing quails. Hmm, so it's singing quails. I wonder what a quail is. Charging cheetahs. Creeping slugs. Dashing horses. Dozing hogs. Scouting fish and clinging frogs. Napping fawn and strutting fowl. Grazing cattle. Swooping owl. Spots with purpose. Spots with flair. Spotted creatures everywhere. Hmm. All right, let's go back and kind of analyze what this book is telling us. There's definitely rhyming, right? So spots on creatures all around. So I think this part is saying like, we're about to introduce you to all these animals and creatures that have spots. Spots on creatures all around, way up high and on the ground. So there was some rhyming there, but it's also teaching. There's animals on the ground and in the air, high up, that have spots. Spots on snakes and gliding snails. So two more animals that have spots. Swimming turtles, singing quails. Swimming turtles, singing quails. So the first line is starting with the same sound. The first line on each page so far. Spots on snakes and gliding snails. Swimming turtles, singing quails. Begins and ends with an S, really. Charging crabs and munching bugs. Charging crabs, that's alliteration. Crawling crabs, it's charging cheetahs. This page is super cool, I love it. Charging cheetahs, so that's telling us cheetahs go super fast. Creeping slugs, so like those are opposites. Cheetahs are super fast, slugs are super slow. Dashing horses, dozing hogs. 
I was just telling us about these animals, the actions that they do, but they all still have spectacular spots. Scouting fish, that means like searching, and clinging frogs, he's holding on to the leaf. Napping fawn, so a sleeping baby deer, and strutting fowl. I think that's a type of bird, I'm pretty sure. He's walking, strutting is another way of walking, like walking very proud. Grazing cattle. So this is telling us what all these different animals are doing. Swooping out, that's what they do. So it's naming everything these animals that are doing that have spots. Spots with a purpose, spots with flair. So I think that means some of these animals have spots for a reason, like to camouflage them. And some of these animals just have spots because it looks pretty. Spotted creatures everywhere. So even the animals that we know and love, like dogs, maybe we can't hug a cheetah, or maybe we can't get close to a crab without it pinching us. So even the animals that we love and live in our homes maybe have spots. All right, so now this author wrote this book, I think, as a way to teach, and she did it very simply. So she taught us the animals, she taught us what it did, and that it had spots. So I wanted to talk about today that there is a way to add details to our poems. And one way to do that is through our five senses. So we know one of our five senses senses is sight. So like, oh, I'm going to try and draw this without messing up. Our eyes. Oh, goodness. So sight, see. Okay. Another one of the senses is touch. So let's see if I can draw a hand. Okay, then we have taste, so like lips. Oops, that's not the best lips. <laughs> oh gosh, lips. So taste, your lips don't make you taste though, your tongue does, so maybe I should put a little tongue on there. Okay, oh man, taste. And then we have um, your ears. Sound, this will be funny. Trying to draw this. So sound um, here. And then we also have our noggin, right? Our nose, which is smell. So the five senses can help us to add details to our poetry. So see, touch, taste, hear, smell. Okay, so these are ways you could do it. You could Describe how something looks. Describe the feeling. You could describe the taste. You could also describe the sound you might hear. Okay, and last but not least, you could describe the sense that you smell. Okay, so some good questions that you could ask yourself when you're doing this is describe how something looks. Well, what are the colors, right? Are there colors with it? What about the shape? Is it big? That would be size. Size would be big, small. The shape, is it circle? Is it square? Is it flat? Is it 2D, 3D? What are you seeing? The touch, is it soft? Is it bumpy? Um, could you describe like the texture of it? Um, oh, maybe you might describe the temperature of it.
Maybe it's hot, cold, taste. Ooh, is it sweet like candy? Salty? Bitter? Um, maybe it's super, super like spicy. Okay, describe the sound. Is it loud? Is it scary? Is it quiet? Oops. Is there like la 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 singing, right? Oh, sorry, I'm like turned around. And then the scents. Is it like a like cookies? Does it smell delicious? Delicious smell? Does it make you want to cover your nose? Does it smell like flowers? My handwriting is getting worse and worse. Does it smell like Christmas? Like, that's right there. It smells like Christmas time, so like peppermint or cinnamon, right? Okay, so you can use your five senses to add detail to any of your poems, okay? So now we're going to take the spectacular spots poem and we are going to talk about what we could add to this certain page we're not going to write in it because it's not our poem to rewrite um it's amazing like it is but what else could we add to it spots on creatures all around way up high and on the ground so using our senses what do you think we could add to this could we describe the look, the feel, the taste, the sound, the sense? What do you think? Spots on creatures all around, way up high and on the ground. So maybe we could say, like, beautiful butterflies fly right past. Big old cats make us a little ah, scared. Spots on snakes. Ah! What would I say? That would be my hearing, describing the sound. And I, I, I couldn't even touch a snake. The only thing I could come up with is to scream. Spots on snakes. Ah! I don't know if you're running or you're screaming. Run! That's what I would be yelling. <laughs> I don't know. That would still be a sound, right? In gliding snails, they leave a trail. They leave that like goop behind them. They leave a sticky trail. Hmm, see? We're getting the touch in there, uh, what it would feel like. Swimming turtles singing quail. So swimming turtles. Splish, splash, swimming turtles, singing quails. La! Singing quails could be a beautiful singing quail, right? Singing quails, oh, maybe we could add singing quails that sound like joy or an angel, right? So we're just using any of our sense or our five senses to add to it, okay. Here we go, crawling crabs and munching bugs. Crawling crabs, hmm, pinching us. Crawling crabs pinching us. But they're so cute. That's my poem. Crawling crabs pinching us, but they're so cute. <laughs> and munching bugs, hmm, munching bugs, crunch, crunch quiet but you can hear them crunch 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 hmm. okay now you try this one on your own charging cheetahs what could you add what do you see with a cheetah the touch taste hear smell I'll give you a chance it already has charging cheetahs Yeah, 
yeah, you can be saying it out loud. You can be changing it. You can be adding to it. Whatever you want to do. Okay, charging cheetahs. Like, that's them running. I like it. Maybe they smell their prey. Okay. Creeping slugs. The sound really gets me. Dashing horses, dozing hogs. Could you add to these? Cute baby hogs, maybe? Stinky peat hogs, so you could say dozing hogs, but smell so bad. <laughs> All right, let's find one more page. Ooh, let's do this one, napping fawn. What would you add to that one? Good job. All right. We are going to write our own poem right here. And we are going to write this poem about ice cream, okay? We're gonna write a poem about ice cream. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna put up a new one of these. And we are going to use our five senses to write this poem. So see, touch, stay, taste, hear, and smell all of those things to describe ice cream. I'm going to give you about one minute to kind of come up with your own poem about ice cream. And then I will reveal my ice cream poem to you. Okay, so you work on yours, I'll work on mine. Then we can work on this one together. Here we go. Remember these five senses. Oh, we'll see, touch, taste, smell, hear. Okay, okay, I'm hurrying. All right, let me read you my poem. Here we go. Ice cream. Oh, I'm going to have to lift it up, aren't I? Okay, I just did, you could have done this however you wanted. I just did line by line. I did see, touch, taste, hear, and smell. So, ice cream. Ball of joy, quick or drip. Like, eat it quick or it's going to drip. Hard but melts fast. Sometimes it could be soft too, I guess. I should put that in there. Creamy, sweet, all the toppings. Laughter, silence, smell so sweet. 
I am ready to eat. So let me explain. This is the C. It looks like a ball of joy. Eat it quick or it drips. That's what you'll see. Touch hard, but it melts fast. And then taste, it's creamy, it's sweet, and there's all these toppings. And then I had to hear laughter, like usually when people are eating ice cream, they're happy, they're together, they're hanging out. But then you also hear silence, nothing, because people are so busy eating their delicious ice cream. Then we have, smells so sweet. It's so hard to describe the smell of ice cream, but it's like, it's like, you just know it's, it smells sweet, right? And then, I'm ready to eat. All right, so I want you to go ahead and share your poem with me. I will be such a good listener. Go ahead. That was C. There's some smell. So you're using these two. Look and smell. What else you got? Yeah, your feel and your taste and your sound, awesome. So if you didn't get a chance to share or finish writing, I hope you finish writing a poem and then find someone to share it with. You can write a poem about anything. I just had a little uncrustable as I was about to record. My stomach was hurting a little and I could write a poem about my uncrustable or I could write it about my pink water bottle, or I could write it about this tape dispenser, right? You can use your five senses for poetry to help make your poems amazing. And remember, there are no rules when it comes to poetry. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.